Hi, and welcome back to Type 1 Diabetes Explained. Today's video is going to serve as a quick little onboarding course for the friends, co-workers, and family members of someone with Type 1 Diabetes. We'll talk about what you need to know to help keep them safe and what to do in the event that you believe that they need help. The first thing to know is that most people with diabetes are able to function completely on their own almost all of the time. There are many people with diabetes who don't ever need help from anybody else, but it is still important to know how to help in the event that they might need it. The second thing that you should know is how they feel about their diagnosis and sharing it with others. Understand that everybody is different, and while some may be fine with you sharing that they have diabetes, others may prefer more privacy as they process their diagnosis. Even if it's been years after the initial diagnosis, some people still prefer to avoid telling others about their diabetes. Always ask the person before sharing their diagnosis with anybody. This is crucial in making the person feel respected and comfortable about coping with their disease. Now we can move on to a few more specific items. We're going to give a short summary of what diabetes is and how it affects the body, but if you want a little more in-depth explanation, be sure to check out the video linked in the description that discusses what type 1 diabetes is in a little more detail. At its simplest, type 1 diabetes is where the body has stopped producing insulin, which is an essential hormone that helps the body absorb the glucose, or sugar, from food. Because the body doesn't produce insulin anymore, glucose can build up in the blood, causing a high blood sugar. The person must then give themselves shots of insulin to help bring their blood sugar down. To the contrary, if there isn't enough glucose in the blood, then the person must eat something to bring it back up. This means that the person will be monitoring their blood sugar often to ensure that it stays within a certain range. In rare cases, if someone's blood sugar gets too high or low, they may need help from those around them to help get it back under control and to stay safe and healthy. As we mentioned at the beginning of the video, most people with diabetes are able to do all of this completely on their own without any help, and most people are able to keep their blood sugar under control for most of the time. Recognizing when someone is experiencing an episode of low or high blood sugar is the most important step in being able to help them. If you notice that a person is feeling shaky, lightheaded, is sweaty, disoriented, or pale, they may be having an episode of low blood sugar, or hypoglycemia. If this is the case, the best first step is to ask the person if they are okay. Most people will be able to catch the symptoms of low blood sugar on their own and treat without help, but others might need assistance from those around them. You can also remind them to check their blood sugar, either using a meter or a CGM. If their blood sugar is below 70 and they are feeling shaky and lightheaded, they should eat something with about 15 grams of carbohydrates. Good things to eat include a juice box, a small amount of cake icing, glucose tablets, or a piece of candy. People with diabetes will often have these things with them, but if they don't, find them some of the previously mentioned items. They will most likely recover within 15 to 30 minutes and will be feeling better. It is recommended that you do not leave them alone while they are low, in case things get worse and they fall unconscious. They also should not be driving or operating any machinery if they are low. Once they have had something to eat, there isn't much else that you need to do. Just make sure that they begin to feel better, which may take a little bit. If the person falls unconscious, begins having a seizure, or is unable to swallow any food, then you may need to administer an emergency injection called glucagon. Glucagon is only to be given if the person is unconscious or unable to eat any glucose. Currently, glucagon comes in two main variations, one that uses a needle and syringe and one that uses a nose spray. View the links in the description for the official glucagon websites that also have detailed instructions on how to administer each different type. Make sure that you understand how to properly administer glucagon. If someone has diabetes, then they should be carrying it with them wherever they go, so be sure to check items such as purses and backpacks for it. Once you have successfully administered glucagon, turn the person on their side. This is very important, as glucagon injection often causes vomiting, so the person must be lying on their side to ensure that their airway remains clear. Once you have done these two things, call 911 or your local emergency number immediately. If you are with a group of people, 
tell someone to call 911 as soon as you believe that glucagon needs to be administered. Administering glucagon is not a complete antidote, and giving it does not mean that the person is completely treated for their low blood sugar. Ensure that they receive medical attention right away. When paramedics arrive, tell them what happened and that the person has diabetes. Pay special attention if the person is sick with the flu or another infection, as those can often cause low blood sugars due to alterations in hormones and the inability to eat. Even though all that seems pretty scary, severe cases of hypoglycemia are generally pretty rare, and plenty of people never need glucagon for their entire lives. As with many conditions, if caught earlier, low blood sugar is much easier to treat. Now we also need to consider what to do if a person has high blood sugar. Just like hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia is fairly simple to self-treat and can sometimes be easier to manage than low blood sugar. The symptoms that you should look for include nausea, vomiting, frequent urination, shortness of breath, fatigue, and fruity smelling breath. High blood sugar can be harder to catch since these symptoms often don't occur until the blood sugar is already significantly too high. So be sure that you pay attention and act if you believe they're having an episode of high blood sugar. If someone has a high blood sugar, they need to administer insulin. It is recommended that one give insulin through a shot, even if they have a pump, to ensure that the insulin gets into the body. A faulty or malfunctioning insulin pump is a common cause of high blood sugar. Most people will be able to do this themselves, but in case there is a time when they won't be able to, take the time now to ask them to demonstrate how to give an injection. It is a fairly straightforward process, and as long as the insulin gets into the body, it will probably work. If the person is having significant trouble breathing, is vomiting, or is unable to administer insulin themselves, then call 911 or your local emergency number, or go to an emergency room immediately. Just like low blood sugar, having high blood sugar for too long can be dangerous. If in doubt about a person's health, always go on the safe side and ensure that they are checked out by a doctor or paramedic. Now, I know the past few minutes have been an overflow of information, so we put it all in a little printable chart here. Check the link in the description to access these charts that can help guide you through what to do if you believe someone is having trouble with their blood sugar. Finally, just a few more quick facts about type 1 that are worth knowing. Firstly, type 1 diabetes is not caused by a person eating too much sugar or being overweight. There is nothing that they could have done or shouldn't have done to prevent diabetes. Implying that type 1 diabetes is caused by eating too much sugar or arose from personal habits is frustrating to those with type 1 and can make people feel guilty about a disease that they had no control over. Secondly, although this is a much less common misconception, diabetes is not contagious. Just to get that out there, there's absolutely no risk of you catching diabetes if you're around someone with type 1. Lastly, if you have any questions, ask the person that you know with diabetes. Many people are willing to discuss any concerns you may have, especially if they come from your desire to care for that person. Hopefully today's information was helpful, and now you have a basic knowledge of how to care for someone with type 1 diabetes if they need help. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a great day.